Hi, I'm Eric Nesa with NewShooter.com. Well, I'm just days away from leaving to go to Amsterdam for IBC. And well, Atomos contacted me and said, hey, Eric, do you want to check out the new Ninja 5? It works, it's powered up, we got the user interface going. You want to check it out before you leave? And of course I said yes, because I'm excited to see it. Matter of fact, I saw it first at NAB 2018, but it wasn't powered up then. And we could see the screen, we could see how it's gonna work, but we never saw a picture. Well, now we got a picture, we have a user interface, but unfortunately, well, maybe fortunately, <laughs> Atomos isn't done with the software yet. Now, I like what they've done so far with the Ninja 5 because I think the user interface is pretty good. I mean, it's very fast to get to the tools and different functionality. It's actually quicker than any of the other Atomos recorders that I've ever used. And I also feel that the Ninja 5 build quality is probably, well, the best as well. So they're going in a good direction with this model here. Why don't we go ahead and jump in and take a look at the beta software and how the Atomos Ninja 5 operates. But first, let's take a look at what comes with the Ninja 5. You get a really nice manual, plus an AC adapter with world connectors. The AC adapter plugs into a dummy battery that slides right into the battery slot. For the new Ninja 5, there's an Atom X. This SSD drive is form-fitting, while the Caddy is larger than the monitor, so it protrudes out a little bit. For inputs, you have a mic line, headphone jack, and remote. Oh yeah, and a power switch. You have two mounting options, on the top and the bottom, but a nice addition is the Airy 2-pin accessory mount. This type of mount stops any twisting. The Ninja 5 does have a fan to keep it cool. On the top, as well as two vents in the back. One of the exciting, kind of a mysterious feature on the Ninja 5 is this Atom Expand port. Now this is really kind of a mystery to us because we don't really have any verified devices yet that's gonna work with it. But for me, an SDI input would be awesome. I'm sure Atomos has a lot of great ideas on how to interface with the recorder. Hmm. Can you say wireless? Now, one thing I noticed right off the bat is it's a slow powering up monitor. Let's go ahead and turn it on. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, 4 1000, 5 1000, 6 1000, 7 1000. So it takes about seven seconds for it to kick in. I'm sure this will be fixed in firmware once it's released. Now I have to again stress, this is beta firmware. So there are a few little bugs that I've noticed, but for the most part, the interface is pretty much gonna be what you see here. Maybe some of the icons will change a little bit, but as far as how it looks, this is pretty much it. I really like the layout of the icons for the different functions. Now it's easy to get into, you basically just tap it and it pops up. Now waveform is a little slow. Again, it took about a second or two to pop up. And you have this, go tap it here, and it'll go wider, and then you again tap it in the right-hand corner. You can go full, tap it again, it goes down to the corner, and then you can turn it on and off. I like this a lot. RGB Parade as well, same thing. Tap it, tap it, gets bigger. Now when scrolling around, you have to hit MON, which is monitor, and here you have your other options. You have a ton of options. Let's just go ahead and go through them real quick. Here's anamorphic, this is for de-squeezing. Obviously, I don't have an anamorphic camera going on here. <laughs> and then you have some guides. Very nice. Now the look isn't working because there are no LUTs installed. And then you have your Atom HDR. And I'm not feeding uh, HDR image to it, so it's gonna look crazily blown out. Now you also have the two times. Now this works extremely well. I'm very impressed by how good it, the, the focus is actually. So you can kind of see here on this camera, let me just kind of pop it back in, get it right in the middle of that little flower bud. And there you can see it's nice and focused. And the image is really crisp on this panel. It's really nice. For 2X, a lot of times 2X just doesn't look good. Tap it, and you can move around this way, but I kind of like the control of just being able to drag your finger across. And then you can go 1x as well, same thing, tap around or go through the box. Now here you have your guides, 16 by 9, 241, 235, 19, 185, 43, and off. And then moving across here, you have a black and white mode. You have your false color, which is awesome. 
and it has a guide on the side which is nice so you can actually see what the values mean basically you'll know up high here you're over 100 ire and then down here in purple you're at zero and you can kind of figure out the middle there <laughs> Now here's your zebra so you can set that too and you go in here and you can change the threshold for your zebras right now it's set to 90. if you want it higher you can go higher i like 90 but everybody's different <laughs> and over here for focus peaking you can change the color and you can change how it looks and the gain whether or not you want it to be stronger or less aggressive that works really nice again up here waveform you have some choices how you want it to look the size transparency brightness here are your hdr settings if i had some luts i'd be able to pick them here and then here i have the display now it's actually set at 49 percent it was banging hot it was at 100 percent when i opened the box and it was super bright now that's gonna be really handy when you're outside but indoors you can save some power and just move it down to about 50%. I, thought, I think that looked realistic. It looked pretty good. Your focus assist. And of course, you've got your vectorscope, your RGB, and your waveform. So you can just get through these really quickly. This is really a nice feature. And then you get out of there and go to record. Whoops. And you get out of there by hitting monitor and you're out now you can't shuffle around here these are kind of like your presets that are your you know the ones you're going to use the most if you want to access the rest of them just hit the yellow mon button and then you can scroll through make a change go back now i found the color looks pretty accurate i used an rgb parade to set my white balance on the camera just to make sure i could see what white was and it does a really nice job in displaying the colors correctly now up here in the right hand corner you have your battery indicator this tells you basically how much power you have left it seems to be doing really well with power i got three hours of continuous recording with an anton bauer np4976 7.2 volt 6000 milliamp battery now prores is the option that it defaults in again i don't have dnx hd installed because it's a uh, beta software so you have to register it first in order to do that. It also identified my camera. And here's your signal. I'm sitting at 4K, 2398. I have the HDMI to trigger, HDMI for time code, and it's set to HDMI 2.0. You can also do an output. If you want to send it out to a monitor that's not 4K compatible, you have this option. Now you also have a 4K DCI crop. You can turn that on or off. And since I'm not sending any 4K DCI, I don't think I can turn it on or off because it's not active. And then for recording, again, you have your format. You can add pull down if you need it. And you can actually add pre-roll as well. And again, your options for your codec. I have ProRes. And then you can use HQ, LT, or 422. And then your file name. And it has like some really quick ways of just tapping these icons up here in the top to get to those menu functions quickly, which is nice. So you don't have to find a menu setting to do that. And that's the basics of the monitor itself. It's super easy to use. I think this interface is a nice improvement over the other Atomos recorders. The Atomos Ninja 5 recorder monitor is solid. I like the 5 inch size. It fits perfectly on camera rigs like this, as well as on gimbals, where a 7 inch monitor might be too big. I really do like that 1000 nit screen. The color is very nice. It works great outside, so a combination of being able to actually see what you're shooting and be able to get critical color is pretty great. Now this is all out of the box too, so it wasn't calibrated. Now, I don't know if you can use one of the X-Rite calibrating tools, but I believe you can. I did not see that option in the software. Now, the software, I have to, you know, again, emphasize that this is not a production or finalized software, which surprises me because I do like the user interface a lot on, on the Ninja 5 right now. Uh, it, it's faster than any of the other models that I've used so far with, uh, on Atomos recorders. So I think they're going in the right direction. 
Also the build quality, well, I believe that it's also the best I've seen so far in an Atomos recorder. So they're definitely going in the right direction with this, <laughs> with this Ninja 5. Uh, all in all, a really nice recorder. Now, one thing I have noticed is there is a fan. It does kick up when you're recording, uh, but when it's being used as a monitor, I don't hear it. In fact, let me just go ahead and stop talking. Now I can hear my refrigerator, it's running in the background, but I don't hear the recorder. Now when I was doing some testing, yeah, I did hear it. It was getting a little warm inside, the fans kicked up. I did mention this to Atomos and they are aware of it. However, they said that they could probably take care of this with some firmware tweaks. And again, the software is not finished yet. It was a few little buggy things that happened, but I didn't get any errors during recording, which is a big deal. And all in all, it didn't shut down or anything like that. So all in all, it's uh, working really well and it gave me a really good idea of, well, what they have coming to us very soon. So that's it. I have to pack my bags. I'm going to IBC this week. I'm leaving in two days. So I gotta get my bags packed, where's the camera? batteries oh, so much stuff to do <laughs> all right well that's it for me i'm eric naso with newshooter.com if you're at ibc in amsterdam make sure to tap me on the shoulder and say hi <laughs>